Hey guys, welcome to the show. It's a very rainy day in LA today. It's been raining a lot in the last couple of weeks, which we actually need. And I find it so funny because <laughs> in the summer when it's not, when it's dry, the New York Times, you know, has all these articles about how, you know, California is in this crazy drought. But then when it rains, they're hysterical about California getting rain. So which is it? Like, <laughs> and it's like the headline, I think, in one of their articles was California gets a lash or uh, rain lashes California or something. And it's just this kind of hyperbolic um, obsession with, you know, with climate. So I today I want to talk about the the wedding that Amy Grant is hosting, the gay wedding of her niece, her lesbian niece. She and her husband, uh, Vince Gill, are hosting a wedding on their uh, ranch. I guess it's in Nash near Nashville. And I want to talk about that, talk about gay weddings in general. And again, this is just kind of an example of how the culture is more influential than the word of God. And I'm going to get into that. But I want, to, I want to look at what's going on with this this story. Then I want I want to look at Franklin Graham's response to it. He tweeted a response to her hosting this wedding, and then look at another person's response to it. And then I want to talk about it and talk about uh, gay weddings and talk about um, whether a Christian should go to a gay wedding or not. So, the Washington Post wrote an article about Amy Grant. Amy Grant, I mean, if you guys don't know, she's a Christian pop singer and has been for, I don't know, many, many years. Um, I never, I was never into her music because I was never a Christian. I wasn't a Christian when she was popular. So Amy Grant, the Washington Post, uh, you know, wrote this glowing kind of story about Amy Grant. And it just... So it says Amy Grant, and it's by this this woman, Emily Yar, and this was written November 29th. And the story is that Amy Grant is being awarded the Kennedy Center Honors. And I just, it reminds me of when, when the Washington Post is writing this kind of glowing story about you, it reminds me of, it reminds me of when Jesus says in John, if you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore therefore the world hates you. So the fact that Amy Grant is hosting a gay wedding gives her legitimacy in the Washington Post. It gives her credibility and it gives it makes her friend a friend of the world's in, in other words so the washington post has no problem writing an article about her and about her um getting this award from the kennedy center and and again it's just uh yeah if if you're if you're of the world the world's going to love you but jesus took us out of the world as christians and so and i want to talk about how her understanding of love is different from a biblical understanding of love because she talks about about this later in the article. Uh, so it says in it, it gets in the article, there's this kind of headline that says support for LGBTQ community. In recent years, Amy Grant has voiced support for the LGBTQ community, where she has had a large fan base for decades. Now she talks about her and Gills, Vince Gills, plans to host her niece's wedding at their farm, which is in her, which is her family's first bride and bride nuptials. Grant recalls her reaction when she learned her niece had come out. And then this is kind of a quote, what a gift to our whole family to just widen the experience of our whole family. Um, so it's just kind of this vague sort of, it's like, okay, what, what, what you're confusing, you're confusing people around you. You're confusing other Christians with a statement like that. Um, and then it goes on to say, she says, quote, honestly, from, from a faith perspective, 
I do always say, Jesus, you just narrowed it down to two things, love God and love each other. I mean, hey, that's pretty simple. So I'm going to get into why that is a an anemic understanding. It's a, te- a text taken out of context is a pretext for a proof text. Like that's just a text taken out of context. And we, we have to understand what loving each other means. What does it mean to love another person? So, which I'm going to get to. So she just kind of takes that out of context. Uh, Jesus narrowed it down to two things, love God and love each other. Yes, that's true. Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor. But loving your neighbor requires telling the truth. And so the article goes on to say, journalist Hunter Kelly, who hosts Apple Music's quote, proud radio, spotlighting LGBTQ country artists and allies, allies, interviewed Grant in July 2021 when she made her most direct comments of support to date. So she's had, Amy Grant has had a history of of this kind of talk of, of supporting LG. Of course, we are to love people in the, in the LGBT, I hate those letters, but... <laughs> Let's just say the gay community. Yes, as Christians, we are to love them. People loved me when I was in that community. And I Christians loved me. And I appreciate that. I appreciated that. Um, and so obviously, yes, we are to love our neighbors. But we are not to compromise God's word. So um, which she she does. And so Franklin Graham, I like his his response to, to this because he tweeted out, uh, Amy Grant announced that she and her husband, Vince Gill, are going to host a same-sex wedding on their farm for her niece. Amy is quoted as saying, quote, Jesus just narrowed it down to two things, love God and love each other, end quote. Yes, we are to love God and love each other. But if we love God, we will seek to obey his word. Jesus told us if you keep... If you love me, keep my commandments. God defines what sin is, not us. And his word is clear that homosexuality is a sin. For me, loving others also means caring about their souls, where they will will spend eternity. It means loving people enough to tell them the truth from the word of God. The authority of God's word is something we can never compromise on. I agree with that statement wholeheartedly. So loving someone, I mean, again, it's like, do you want to love someone into eternity with God? Or do you want to love them down a road to perdition, down a road of total destruction and eternal torment like that that's not love to me that is that's not love biblically that's hate actually um to to quote love someone and not tell them the truth about what's what sin is and what what's going to happen so this this other article was written by i, I want to just touch on it for a second it was written by larry i don't know how to say his name larry tomzak in the christian post and I love he, he uses a quote from Charles Spurgeon, and he says, Charles Spurgeon said, discernment is not knowing the difference between right and wrong. It's knowing the difference between right and almost right. See, that's what discernment is. And as Christians, we have to be very discerning and, and see, OK, this seems it seems so loving to host a a wedding for your niece who's a lesbian. It seems like the loving thing to do, but is it really, is it really loving to, to tell people in your congregation that homosexual behavior is not a sin or to be soft on that in some way? Is that really loving? We have to be discerning about this as Christians and, um, and it's getting more and more, difficult. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll tell a story. I, um, about a year ago of someone reached out to me and she had a daughter who came out to her as a lesbian. And 
she immediately asked her daughter to go to a church, the, the church that was in their city, to speak to someone on staff, to speak to a counselor. And this is a giant mega church in America. It's one of the largest churches, evangelical churches. And so the woman went, or the daughter went to, the daughter I think was at the time, she was I think 21. She went to see a counselor at the church. The counselor ended up telling her that we don't believe homosexual behavior, something to the effect of we don't believe homosexual behavior is a sin at this church, which is shocking, okay? But not only did she do that, but she gave this young girl who was struggling with this decision, she gave her the book Torn by Justin Lee, which I have a copy of, and I know Justin Lee, I met, I've met him, but um, ju the Torn, Justin Lee is a, is a gay affirming Christian, quote unquote. And so the book is all about affirming homosexual behavior and being a Christian. And so instead of giving her my book, for example, <laughs> This, this counselor gave her this book that affirms homosexuality. It's, it's so beyond the pale. I don't even know, I don't even know what, how to even wrap my head around it. This is an evangelical church in America, a conservative quote unquote, it's not conservative anymore, but this is what's going on in the culture. And we have to be aware as Christians, we have to be discerning, uh, like, is this church affirming? I mean, you should ask your pastor. Ask your pastor, are you, is this church gay affirming or not? Like we need to know because, because it's actually heresy. That's a heretical view to have, to, to believe that homosexual behavior is not a sin is heretical. And in, in like the early church, they would be condemned. These people would be condemned as heretics. And then in this article by, by Larry Tomzak, uh, he says, Amy Grant re recently said, quote, there are many things I don't understand about God. And then he says, perhaps the beauty of his holiness with his love is one of them. So, yeah, I mean, we have to understand that God, we, we, we worship a holy God. Um, R.C. Sproul wrote the book, The Holiness, of, I think it's called The Holiness of God. And we should be in awe of his holiness. And not only awe, but in fear of his holiness. Like God is holy. And to, to kind of, to dabble in this sort of kind of sin stuff is is not, it's very, very dangerous. And it goes on, this article goes on to say, when Amy was on Pride Source, I guess Pride Source is a radio program, she said, quote, I know the religious community has not been very welcoming, but with God, everyone, everybody is welcome. Everybody, exclamation point. See, and this is the other thing. It's like when people say God is welcoming to everyone or God loves everyone unconditionally. It's like, no, there's a condition on. <laughs> there is a condition. It's called repentance. That is a very specific and crucial condition. Vital condition is repentance. And so. And if you don't, again, if you don't believe that homosexual behavior is wrong, then why would you repent of it? So that's the, that's the danger of it. But Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself and take up your cross to follow me. I mean, that's a condition. So we have to repent. Repentance is the condition. And then he gets into, he calls it the basics, the ABCs. And he says... And a, this the writer of this article says it says a affirm let's affirm God's design. Um, the entire Bible unambiguously defines God's design for marriage to be one man and one woman, in Genesis and Matthew and Ephesians, and and he quotes I always quote Second Timothy. This is like my one of my go to quotes. But he says for the time will come when people will not put put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what they their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. 
I'm not used to this English translation. I, I don't know what this is, but I'm used to the ESV. Um, so, yeah, we when when people have desires and when people want uh, want what they want, they're going to change or they're going to ignore what the Bible says on that issue or change what the Bible says on that issue and distort it. And they will find teachers to, to, uh, to suit them. And so, and there are plenty of teachers out there who are willing to do that. And he goes on as in his ABCs B is believe and behave. And he's saying we have to believe in the word of God and behave accordingly. And he says, Jesus engaged compassionately with sinners, but did not excuse sin, right? So in the Gospels, Jesus, of course, he loves sinners. That's who he came to save. He did not come to save the righteous, but the but sinners. But he never left sin, sinners in their state of sin. He always called them to repentance, like Levi the tax collector. He called him out of that tax booth, out from that life, from that sinful life he was living. He called... The, the woman at the well, the woman of Samaria, he called her to repentance. He called the woman caught in adultery to repentance. So it's like Jesus never just leaves you in your sin. He calls you out of that. He, he calls you to, to, to abandon that, to repent, of, to turn away from that, to follow him. And then he goes on to say, we affirm God's unconditional acceptance, but there is no unconditional approval of behavior contrary to what God prohibits. Jesus's directive to Paul was, quote, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God in order that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. Now that is Acts 26, 18, which is one of my favorite verses now because it's the, the verse that my sister-in-law prayed over me for 20 years or, or however many years, many, many years. The third thing he says, C is consider example. And he gives examples of, of, of this in the, from the Bible. He says, uh, from Matthew 18, he says, whoever mis misleads one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for him to have a millstone hung around his neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. And so because, because Amy Grant, I think she's, she sold over 30 million albums because she's a very public popular figure. She has a big influence on a many, many, many people and, and many young people are looking to her or, or hearing about this and, and thinking, oh, if Amy Grant says it, I mean, Amy Grant's 62 and she's like my parents' age or my grandparents' age. So it must be okay. So she's leading so many young people, not only young, but any age. He's, she's leading so many people astray by just casually hosting this gay wedding and not saying, not being clear about this is a sin. So, um, and then he says, he quotes, he quotes James, not many of you should become teachers knowing that we, that we shall receive the greater judgment. And I, I know Amy Grant is not a teacher technically in the church, but she, again, she has this huge sphere of influence. And uh, so in, in essence, she is teaching. She's teaching the world just by tweeting something or she's teaching the world that, that loving your lesbian niece means affirming that means affirming that sin and, and not calling it sin. Um, so, or, or loving your gay neighbor means affirming that your gay neighbor or your child or whoever. So she's leading many, many people astray. And this, that, that's it. This is what it, that always just kills me. I mean, I just, I don't mind like if you're, if you're confused on something or your theologies, but if you're, if you're leading people astray, if you're leading people to destruction, that really makes me angry. And, uh, because, you know, praise God, as, as I said, when I met the Christians at the coffee shop, they told me directly that homosexual behavior was a sin. 
And I'm so lucky, not lucky, I'm so glad that they did that because they told me the truth and the truth shall set you free. They told me the truth and, and that was important for me to hear. I mean, you know, they, they could have easily said, oh, well, we don't really, you know, it's no big deal. Like we're, we're, we affirm homosexuality at our church. It's, and it's like, just think about, you know, it just, it would have been a disaster. So I'm so grateful to those people who told me the truth. And by the way, you know, Paul tells us, I've, I've said this before on the show, but Paul tells us what love is. Uh, love is not affirming someone's sin. Love, he says in 1 Corinthians 13, he says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. And this is the key verse. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. So when you go to a wedding, a gay wedding, you're rejoicing at wrongdoing and uh it is it's it's I, and i talked about this before I, when i first got saved my two agents at william morris invited me or, or one of them was a uh was is a gay man and he was getting married to another man and he, they, he invited me and I was put on the spot. I, we were at dinner, at, <laughs> we were at dinner and one of the agents, she said, to, she turned to me and she said, you're going to, let's call him Joe. You're going to Joe's wedding, right? And I, and I thought at the time, because I was a brand new Christian, I didn't know what to say. And I was put on the spot. I was like, yes, of course I'm going because I thought that was the loving thing to do. And uh, it was so I ended up going to the wedding. It was such a big mistake. And uh, when, when, because once I got there, I, it was all the way out somewhere far. It was like Malibu, but not Malibu or somewhere out there. And, and I remember just walking in and seeing all the people coming and dressed up and everyone so kind of happy. And I was thinking, oh my gosh wait, I'm here celebrating a wedding between a marriage between two men. And it really hit me hard. And I, I had a really difficult time that night. Uh, and I, and it taught me that was a very good lesson to me because it, it I, I learned that, that loving people doesn't mean going to their gay wedding. In fact, um, in fact, as, as Christians, I believe that we should not go to gay. Like if it's your son, your daughter, your niece, whoever, whomever, you should not attend the wedding because it's, first of all, my being at this wedding years ago was probably really confusing to some people there because uh, some of the people there knew I was a Christian and they probably thought, oh, like Beckett's here. So I guess this is all good. Everything's okay. So it's, it's a terrible witness to Christ. Uh, so to go to, and, and it's also you're celebrating sin is basically what you're doing. You're celebrating sin. You're in, engaging in that celebration. And, and so I, 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 in my opinion, I think that Christians should not attend gay weddings, um, there may be some crazy circumstance where you can, but I, and I, I would never, I would never go to a gay wedding again in my life. I will never go. Um, and now you can, there's ways around that. You can tell the person who's having the wedding. If it's your niece who's having the wedding, I say, you can say, I love you. I, I absolutely love you but I have these convictions about what marriage is. And I, I cannot, I cannot go against my conscience. It is neither safe nor what, uh, what does Martin Luther say? It is neither safe nor, uh, I can't remember the rest of the quote when he's at the, the diet of worms. Um, but when he's asked to recant, 
but there's other ways to 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 love your niece or whomever you can go to dinner with your niece and your niece's friend or whatever you can you can invite them over to dinner i mean ask rosario butterfield like that's how she ended up coming to faith in christ her past the pastor and his wife kept inviting her over for dinner her neighbor it kept inviting her over for dinner and and just basically loving on her for a long i think it was over a year and that's that's how we should do it and we can you know say say to our loved one or say to our family member hey like i love you so much but i can't be a part of this but i would love to have you guys over for dinner i would love to take you guys out to dinner i would love to you know it's whatever etc there are many other ways to to love your your family members who are in the lgbtq community um and but going to the wedding uh for me going to the wedding is a, is a red line in the sand because it, it's it's dishonoring to god it's a confusing witness and it is i think it's just bad for for you as a christian to to engage and because it's like it's like Romans one where Paul says not only do they do such things they give approval to those who do so your your presence at this wedding is almost kind of giving approval to what's happening and so that's why I say it is uh, it's no bueno so I hope that helped next week uh, for sanctity of life. Day, I'm we're gonna do we're doing a video on uh, a really interesting video on the a pro-life uh, person who I interviewed and it's pretty stunning um, this is the guy who what is behind justice for the five I don't know if you remember the justice for the five but it was it was the the, the few people who found these aborted babies and he anyway he's the one who took the photograph that went viral he took the photograph of the 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 uh babies that went viral so we're going to uh, talk to him next week and uh his story is is crazy and fascinating so stay tuned for that but thank you guys and we'll see you next time